So the time is to continue our session. Now we are finishing part of our conference. So I would like to introduce Jana Butko from Braunschweig Technical University. Title is on the screen, so please. Thank you very much. So um, I, I'm going to, to describe you the results of our research project, uh, which is summarized in these two papers. Uh, one paper is, the first one is already published in fractional calculus and applied analysis with open access. And the second one is accepted to fractional calculus and applied analysis also will be in open access. So what is it all about? Let me first recall some classical results, classical results, the classical settings. So if we have a time homogeneous Markov process, the, the main characteristics of the process is its transition kernel, namely a kernel which describes the probability of transition from a point X to a set dy when the process has a time T time units for, for this transition. So if we know the transition kernel of a process, we can construct integral operators with this kernel. And this family of integral operators is a semi-group of operators, which, is, which means that this is satisfied. And in some cases, uh, this semi-group is actually strongly continuous semi-group. And in this case, there exists a generator of this semi-group, the operator L. And then this semi-group, so this family of integral operators, provides <clears throat> provide solutions uh, to, to the Cauchy problem for the following type of evolution equations. <clears throat> so this evolution equation, so on the left-hand side, we have the first-time derivative with respect to time and first-order derivative with respect to time. And here we have operator L, the generator of the semi-group TT uh, with respect to space variable applied to, to the function you know, known function. So uh, if we know the transition kernel of Markov process, uh, this means that we know the corresponding semi-group. And this means that we are able to solve the Cauchy problem for such type of evolution equations. And yeah, as a, the, the semi-group TT is in a sense uh, the generalization of the notion of exponential function of the operator L. And of course, due to this uh, definition, uh, this integral of, this integral is nothing else but just the expectation of a function u taken at xi t. Xi is our Markov process at time point t. And this x means that we consider the process which starts at the point x. So we have um, stochastic representation for the solution of this Cauchy problem. And we say, we say that xi this process xi Markov process xi provides stochastic solution of this evolution equation. And we say also that this evolution equation is the governing equation for this Markov process xi. Okay, so basic couple in, in all this story is of course Brownian motion and heat equation. We know that, heat, uh, that Brownian motion um, is the stochastic solution of the heat equation, namely such expressions provide solutions of the heat equations for a big class of initial data. Uh, however, uh, Brownian motion and heat equations uh, and heat equation, these are things which are used uh, for description of classical diffusion, standard diffusion. And nowadays there are many uh, evidence that sometimes there is a kind of diffusion, but it is anomalous in the sense that it is qualitatively uh, faster or slowly as the classical diffusion. And of course, there are many uh, efforts to describe such anomalous diffusion mathematically. There are many models. And in particular, one can consider continuous time random walks uh, and consider their approximations uh, as a model of anomalous diffusion. And as um, uh, Bernoulli random walk, walks uh, allow to approximate uh, Brownian motion, and hence uh, uh, it is the case of classical diffusion. Uh, in, in more general situation, uh, continuous random walks um, and their limits uh, provide um, a more general equation. So uh, Brownian motion has governing equation. This one, heat equation, then the, the special scaling limits of continuous time random walks as governing equations have, for example, this type of equation. What is what? So it is a time and space fractional heat equation, namely, instead of Laplacian, we have fractional Laplacian. This is the second minus. And instead of first order time derivative, we have a Caputo derivative 
of order beta. And so, so I have rewritten the equation in this integral form. So instead of the fractional derivative of order beta here on the left-hand side, I have a, an integral, riemann liouville integral of order beta on the right-hand side. So this is the integral version of time and space fractional heat equation. And uh, so as you see, so this is actually my L and this is the, in, uh, the generator of a strongly continuous semi-group, the generator of a Levy process, of a Markov process. So it is nice. Uh, and it is as before, but what we have here, this is a kind of a, a memory kernel, K, okay, uh, which makes the whole story non-Markovian anymore. So our aim is to consider this type of evolution equations, a general, a, a big class of evolution equations. Uh, these integral equations, we have some kernel K, uh, and we have L. L is just the generator of a strongly continuous semigroup on some Banach space X and an initial data is from the definition, uh, the domain of definition of the operator L. So uh, we have the following assumptions on our kernel K. This is the assumption. So you see kernel K is a Borel function which satisfies this uh, estimate. This means that with respect to the second variable, our kernel is a little bit better than L1. And with respect to the first, a variable, this norm can explode when t tends to zero, but this explosion we can um, compensate by some suitable power function. And you see epsilon is here and here. So we can play with, with regularity with respect to first and second variable, namely the better k is with respect to second variable, the worse k can be with respect to, uh, uh, to, the, the, to the first variable and vice versa. Okay, so this is the only assumption on the kernel K and starting from this assumption, we construct, yeah. So the question is which processes uh, can be used to, to provide stochastic uh, solutions, to provide a stochastic representation of solutions of this equation star. And motivated by, by, by this question, we have obtained our results. Uh, so I will introduce the results. And first step is the following. We start with the kernel K and starting and knowing only the kernel k, which satisfies assumption one, we construct the following function phi. It, it is given in this series and the coefficients uh, uh, cn, they are constructed uh, via this type of iterations. So only the kernel k is used and we have iterations. So actually this is what happens uh, if we s solve a kind of Valterra equation by Banach for fixed point uh, argumentation. So it's a kind of Picard inter iterations what, which appear. So the statement is that under assumption one, this uh, function is well defined, is entire, and is an entire function. So why we need this function? So it's a summary. So starting from the kernel K, we construct this function phi and it is a nice function. Next step. Uh, we, we need additional assumption that this function phi with fixed t and with minus second variable is a completely monotone function. This means that uh, there exists a family of non-negative random variables such that this function phi is nothing else but the Laplace transform of, of, of these random variables or Laplace transform of, of the distributions of these random variables. So we have this process. A of t. So the result is the, fo the following. Under assumptions one and two, the following holds. Uh, we can define this operator. Uh, so t is the semigroup which corresponds to the operator L. The, this guy, so this A of t, it is something which corresponds to our k. And so what is on the right hand side is well defined and uh, as a Bochner integral. And it, it, so, so the left-hand side is a nice bounded linear operator on our Banach space X. And this is uh, really a function of L in the sense of um, Healy Phillips functional calculus. And the, the result is as follows that uh, with the help of this, of this operator, we actually solve our equation. Uh, and initial conditions are satisfied uh, also. So this is the main result. And you see this result uh, holds only under assumptions that we have a strongly continuous semigroup. K is 
such, so a little bit better than integrable, and the corresponding function phi is completely monotone. Now a little bit uh, of uh, interpretations. So this formula here uh, can be written down, rewritten in a stochastic way. That is, we have this semi-group, original semi-group TT. Um, and then uh, this, this integration, this additional integration means that we consider expectation of this object. That is, that is so once again, uh, TTU0 uh, solves the classical equation without the memory kernel. So memory kernel is one. And then instead of T, we insert our subordinator, our process A of T and consider the expectation. So this is the structure of solutions of, of, of this equation. That's why we call it subordination principle because we obtain the solution as subordination of class of, of, of standard solution of the corresponding classical evolution equation by means of this subordinator. And of course, this if the semi-group TT corresponding to this operator has some stochastic representation, then we can insert it here. And, and therefore we obtain stochastic representation for the solution of the whole generalized time fractional equation of this type. For example, if our TT corresponds to a Markov process has this representation, then the solution of this equation has the corresponding uh, stochastic representation like, the, like this one. So the difference is that instead of T, we have F A of T here. So this is the contribution of our memory kernel. In the same way, if our L is a generator of a Markov process plus a potential and our original semi-group has a Feynman cast representation, standard Feynman cast representation, then the solution of the corresponding equation here with the memory kernel uh, has this Feynman cast formula. Again, we just substituted T by A of T everywhere. And of course, yeah, we can consider then sub subordinate semi-groups, Schrodinger groups, et cetera, et cetera. Well, let us now discuss some special cases. Uh, let us additionally assume that our uh, kernel K is homogeneous. That is this identity holds. Uh, if the kernel K is homogeneous, then the corresponding function phi is homogeneous, and this homogeneity is um, is preserved also in A in the sense that we can choose A in this way. So our subordinator A of T uh, is just a product of a particular random variable which corresponds to the function phi with at time equal to one, uh, multiplied with a power function of time. So we have split at randomness and time dependence in our subordinator. And why it is interesting because, uh, yeah, so this is the example. For example, we, we consider the kernel which corresponds to the standard time fractional equations. So this kernel, it is of course homogeneous with this theta and uh, the corresponding function phi is well known. It is metak Lefler function, it, it is completely monotone. So our assumptions are satisfied. And uh, if, for example, we take uh, as operator L here, Brownian uh, Laplacian, that is the corresponding process is Brownian motion, then uh, the statement of theorem two, so this statement says us that a stochastic solution uh, of this equation, so that is the solution is given in the, by this formula. And this process here is nothing else but Brownian motion uh, subordinated by this subordinator f of t, a, a of t. And since our uh, kernel is homogeneous, we can, uh, as a of t, we can take just um, a random variable, a suitable random variable a multiplied with t to the power beta. And now, if bet, we know that Brownian motion is self-similar, that's why this process has the same uh, one-dimensional distribution, marginal distributions as this process. And uh, so you see, the randomness is not is not here anymore. So we have just a time delayed uh, Brownian motion multiplied with some random variable. This random variable can be understood as random scaling. And again, further, we can replace this Brownian motion by a fractional Brownian motion. And this product here is known in the literature. It is called a generalized gray Brownian motion. It is another class of stochastic processes which are used for modeling anomalous diffusions. Uh, and it, it is an interesting class because it is self-similar with uh, stationary increments. So it is very convenient for modeling 
uh, and in the literature, such representations are known. And we now we have shown the way how to get these representations also for a bigger class of kernels K. Uh, okay. Uh, another special case, if our kernel is of convolution type, uh, so K depends on the difference between T and S. And also the Laplace transform of this function is, has a special form, na namely it is one over H for some Bernstein function H. So it's a special case of our assumptions. Uh, in this case, um, it is known uh, that... Uh, Excuse me, Bernstein, uh, you mean completely monotone? No, I mean Bernstein and there is a, a, a correspondence between Bernstein and completely monotone in the sense that F is a Bernstein function if and only if F is non-negative and e to the power f is completely monotone. Okay, thank you. But, but uh, okay, no, not each completely monotone function has such type of representation. That's why, uh, so <clears throat> one should be careful. It is, it is like uh, in the case of, so this is something about the Laplace transform, but if we discuss a Fourier transform, then we have positive definite functions and negative definite functions. So exactly the same story in this case. Okay, so, so if we consider this special case, then we know that each Bernstein function H corresponds to, to a process, uh, a Levy process uh, called um, subordinator. Levy subordinator corresponding to this Bernstein function via this, uh, again, Laplace transform. And if we have such Levy subordinator, we, we, we may consider the inverse process this is the formula. And it is known in the literature that uh, in, for such kernels, K, one can obtain stochastic solutions of this equation uh, by means of uh, inverse subordinators. Namely, uh, we can, so it follows from our results, but it's also known from the literature that uh, in this case, we can take as A uh, the inverse subordinator. It is known in the literature, uh, but, but you see, uh, our case does not assume that our kernel should be necessarily of the convolution type. So, so our A uh, is for a bigger class of equations. On the other hand, let me skip this. On the other hand, uh, if we consider kernel of this particular type, uh, then our equation is equivalent to the Caputo type equation where this Cap Caputo type fractional derivative is given via its Laplace transform. And here exactly this Bernstein function pops up. So in the standard case for, for just the Caputo fractional derivative of order beta, our Bernstein function is just the, this power function. Okay, so, so what I want to say, uh, as a special case of our equations, we can consider this type of kernel. And this corresponds to this type of equations. In particular, a special case of, of such functions H, we have different H, which corresponds, for example, for a Caputo derivative of order beta, which corresponds in particular for a mixture of Caputo derivatives of different orders, and which corresponds in particular to distributed order derivative, Caputo type derivative. That is all this type of equations are just special case of, of our class of equations for which we have this subordination principle. Okay, I, I still have one minute. And uh, so the last what I wanna say is that we have a, a explicitly given structure. So how to obtain all these things. So we start from the K, we have a, an explicit formula for phi. Uh, and if this phi completely monotone, then this means that we know the subordinator in some sense. Uh, so uh, this, this procedure allows us to, cons to consider more general kernels K uh, as before people did, and to construct the, for the corresponding objects. So we have considered, for example, uh, this terrible, a big, a big terrible class of kernels, which are given by this formula, uh, and, and called uh, Marichev Saiga Maeda kernels. They appear in fractional calculus. So we have a, a power function multiplied with a special function, which is Apple's third generalization of the Gauss hypergeometric function. So it's a big class of functions which has uh, five parameters. Okay, 
so having this kernel K, one can show that this kernel K is, time homo is homogeneous and satisfies all our assumptions. And the corresponding fee, it is possible to calculate it explicitly. And it is given in terms of free parameter metacli flare function. So, so really starting from this big class of kernels, one can construct the corresponding fee. And moreover, for such uh, special functions, it is known under which choice of parameters this function is completely monotone. So under this choice of parameters. Hence, hence the corresponding random variables exist. And hence, we are able to construct stochastic solutions on feynman cas formulas for evolution equations of this type, where L is an arbitrary generator of a strongly continuous semigroup and K is this big class of kernels. I guess it is, yeah, almost all what I wanted to say. Yeah, just two special cases of our terrible kernels are the kernel of power functions. And, and, and partic in particular, as a special case, we are back to uh, the classical kernel of time fraction evolution equations. Now it is everything. Thank you very much for your attention. Maybe a small comment. Uh, you, uh, your assumption of, uh, of integrability for the function k. Uh, yes. It's. Uh, it seems to me. Yes. It seems to me that it is just uh, the Mori class. Thank. For, for the uh, okay, no, uh, in, no, in fact, not uh, uh, Mori class is for arbitrary uh, mm, left uh, border of the interval. It is, uh, but mm. it is re related to Mori class. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. May I ask one question? Yes. Uh, thank you for the presentation. You mentioned gray uh, Brownian. Most yeah. great yeah. generalized gray Brownian yeah. models, which are, I think, uh, uh, how you model anomalous diffusion. Is your analysis appropriate also for other models of this type, say Levy flights and similar? Could this be extended also there? So, so, so once again, I will open the, the proper, appropriate slide. So, this is just the idea. So, so you see, if we have a, a time homogeneous kernel. Not necessarily this one, but any time homogeneous kernel with this guy, which uh, produces our phi and A, then we can take A uh, uh, such that we split randomness and uh, time dependence in this um, uh, subordination, in this subordinator. Yes. So, th so the, the main result here that we have this type of uh, stochastic solution. But if uh, our process here, here should be Markov process which corresponds to L. So instead of Brownian motion, we can consider alpha stable Levy process. Yeah. So if it is alpha, if it is stable, self-similar, we can do the same procedure as here. So instead of randomness here, we can pull it out with some power and make a random scaling here. So yes, uh, you don't have to, you don't need Brownian motion. Any self-similar process, like uh, alpha stable Levy process, for example. And it is written actually in our first paper, which is already published in open access. So yes, instead of, instead of uh, such things where we have um, a randomly scaling uh, Levy, uh, delayed Levy process, we can consider randomly scaled fractional Levy motion. Yes, it is written in the first paper. You're welcome to read it. Thanks. There are more technical details, but it is doable exactly in the same way. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. А я ничего не слышу. There is a monograph of Jan Prus evolution yes. integral equations. Yes. And in this monograph, such uh, integral equations uh, are studied. And uh, you use only L as a um, um, generator of operator semigroups, but uh, Prus uh, proved that L must uh, uh, satisfy some conditions uh, more general, generally speaking. 
more general than uh, generator of semi group. Maybe it, it, uh, it generates resolving operators of such uh, equation, but uh, this uh, family is not semi group. Mm -hmm. And the, you can use this result for your mm -hmm. for more general uh, statement of your problem. Thank uh, you. Okay, thank you very much. So we have no time for other questions. I think. So let us let the speaker. Should give me a microphone, Ah yes. So let us 